Hi, uh, welcome to today's devotional podcast with Dr. Jacob Al. Happy New Year. Uh, this is the first uh, broadcast of our podcast that we have uh, in this New Year 2022. We want to be thankful to the Lord that we have entered this brand new year on the third day of January. It is all glory to God because it's he who has kept us and brought us this far. The topic for our devotional podcast today is a double portion, a double portion. That is believing God for hard things in 2022. And there's no doubt that all the focus we are hearing about this year is that things are going, not going to be easy. The economists have told us that inflation could go higher and it's going to be, life is just going to be difficult as we see the new variants of uh, COVID-19, Omicron, uh, just sort of uh, skyrocketing the infestation rates, just going up. So there are a lot of challenges that we are going to face uh, in this new year. And so for us as believers, there's the need for us to understand that the source of our power to sustain us through this year is through the Spirit of God. The power of God is that is what is going to sustain us. And therefore, we need a double portion of his anointing and his power to be able to face the challenges that are ahead of us in this new year. And we want to look at an account in 2 Kings that sort of talks about double portion, how that somebody needed a double portion of the former prophet's anointing to be able to carry out the battle that uh, was going to be handed over to him. And so we want to look at 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass when the Lord was able to take up Elisha, was going to take up Elisha into heaven by a whirlwind. Then Elisha went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elisha said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. Now the concept of a double portion in Bible, in the Bible is a double blessing. So to put this passage in context, we know that in earlier chapters, Elisha had been uh, uh, had become the apprentice understanding Elisha. Elisha, uh, Elijah, Elisha was from quite a worthy family. He was a farmer, a worthy farmer, and we read of the account that of his calling in that uh, he. When he answered the call of God to prophetic ministry, he went and killed the two blocks that he was using for farming and, and used the woods of the uh, of the log, uh, the, the plow, and slaughtered the cows uh, and, and sacrificed them to the Lord. And then he left everything and began to be an apprentice to Elijah. It was time for Elijah now to be taken up to, into heaven. So what happened? Uh, Elisha uh, wanted to get a double portion of his spirit so he could continue the job. And, and so this passage in scripture gives us a very detailed account of how the secession took place from Elijah handing over the baton to Elisha. Now, secession is a very big issue in Christian leadership today. Some people don't plan for it at all. They just stay on their position, they work till they drop dead. But that's not a healthy thing to do because we all know that at a point, you have to hand over the baton to the next generation. And how we have prepared them and our ability to transition in a seamless way that the work of God is not harmed is very important. And so here we find uh, Elijah telling Elisha to stay at a particular place because he was going to where? Uh, Bethel from Gilgal. If we read the account, Elisha said, no, he is not going to stay. He wanted to go with him because he sensed in his spirit that his master was about to depart. So if I have to take over the mantle from you, then I need to be there to see how you depart so you can hand over to me. 
So why Elijah was asking Elisha to stay on in, uh, in Gilgal while he goes to Bethel is unknown. But obviously, it would seem like it was sort of like a test to Elisha. Was he truly wanting, able to follow him to the end? Or he had other things to occupy himself to do and would want to leave and not be able to follow his master to the end. Now, so the spiritual lesson we learn here is, look, uh, if you are an associate pastor, you need to be able to fulfill your role as the associate pastor to the very end. You don't have to quit at one point out of frustration, but you have to put your hands on the plow and hang in there and stay in with a tenacity, a spirit of tenacity to be able to see the end of your master's calling before you can take over. Now, the other lesson is that, look, Elisha didn't go announcing himself as the prophet uh, because if he had that, look, Elisha was going to be taken up into heaven. Uh, now, why is Elijah was going to be taken up into heaven? He could have gone around making a campaign to say, hey, I am now the new prophet. Don't you know I have come? I've landed. It's my turn. The old man is gone. I am taking over. Now, we have some associates and apprentices in ministry and leadership who are just not patient enough to follow through till the end of the tenantship of their mentor. And so what happens? They are in such a hurry to take over the position that they concoct and do things that makes them break away from their master far earlier than they are, they are expected to, to do. And so the transition is not seem, seamless. There are problems, and they probably would sometimes take half of the congregation to start a new ministry. But it always doesn't work. Elijah and Elisha's example here gives us an indication of how the associate pastor, the apprentice, has to be patient and follow the leader or his mentor till the very end. Even when the mentor thinks that, hey, he doesn't need his services, he has to understand his role and be in tune with the spirit to know that his time has come and he needs to follow his master through to the end of his to, 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 of his departure from full-time ministry, and then things will be the baton will then be handed over to him. So, in context to this, we those who know the story, Elisha had done this three times, and we will look at the details uh, uh, tomorrow. But the point we want to make today is to focus on the bev, the double portion. Why double portion? Why was Elisha asking Elijah to give him a double portion of his spirit. Now, this is not in the Bible, but theologians have sort of speculated that since Elisha, Elijah went through a very heavy challenge with the, with the reign of Ahab and Jezebel in the northern kingdoms of Israel, we saw how frustrating Elijah's ministry was till a point that he was depressed and wanted to die, he was asking for suicide. Now, he became suicidal as a result of the frustration that he had gone through, even though he had mighty, wonderful miracles. The Lord had to Put him, send him to a reserve place and get him to rest before he could continue. So we, we see that, hey, Elisha was aware of some of the challenges his master went through when it came to the demonic reign of Eli, uh, Ahab and Jezebel. So he 
knew that, look, if I have to be successful in this my calling, then I need to have a double portion of my master's anointing so that I'll be powerful enough to make an impact on the kingdom and to overcome the demonic forces of Ahab and his queen Jezebel. And, and, and so we see that uh, Elijah uh, had to prepare Elisha to hand over the baton to him, so to speak. Elisha, being sensitive, despite oppositions, knew what was coming. But he refused to let go, but he was committed to follow his master till the very end. So when the master realized that he could not shake him off so easily, he then asked him what he wanted. And Elisha said he wanted a double portion of his spirit. And so you ask yourself, why the, a double portion? Where does this double portion come uh, at all? Where is it coming from? So the concept of double portion in the Bible is double blessing. The Old Testament typically used to refer to the oldest son's inheritance or birthrights. Uh, similarly, uh, Deuteronomy 21.17 says, he shall acknowledge the firstborn and son of the unloved by giving them a double portion of all they have. For he is the beginning of his strength. Uh, this is the right of the firstborn. So uh, if you, 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 you had a firstborn, uh, in accordance to the Jewish custom, the laws uh, of Israel, as we see in in Deuteronomy here, you had to give the firstborn, your first blood, a double portion of your inheritance. And, and so the, the rest then can be shared among the others, but the firstborn had to receive a double portion of uh, the dad's inheritance. So where do we see this again? So uh, the, 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 the double portion was also given to Hannah by her, her husband because of his love for her and unable to bear children. First Samuel uh, 1.5. We read of the account of Samuel and, and his family, how Hannah was uh, more loved, but she was barren and had no kids. And uh, 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 her penina, who was her, her rival, kept taunting her and saying words that hurt her so much that um, whenever they went to Silo, uh, where the tabernacle of the Lord was to offer annually, uh, she didn't enjoy the festivity at all. She spent time rather mourning. Uh, but we are told that uh, uh, the husband loved her more than Penina, so he always gave Hannah a double portion of uh, the meat that they sacrificed uh, uh, to, to the God at Silo. Uh, so that's where this uh, double portion is, is heard of again. And after Job's suffering, he received twice as much as before. Job 42 verses 10. We all know the story of Job, how he lost everything, but he held fast to his integrity. He refused to curse the Lord, and the Lord thereafter blessed him twice. He gave him a double portion of uh, uh, whatever his uh, property was uh, before this time. Now, on a negative note, we also read about a double portion of judgment is mentioned in a negative connotation in Revelations 18, 6. Now, it was time for the great prophet Elijah to be taken up into heaven. So this background is what we know in the scriptures concerning double portion, double portion. And I strongly believe that this year, as believers, we need to seek the double portion of the anointing of God upon our lives. Whatever we were doing, our Bible reading, our prayer time, we need to double it so we can get a double portion of his power. Because 
we cannot stand the hardships and the challenges that this new year will offer us without a double portion of his anointing. And so we want to say that it is important that we understand the importance of this double portion. Elisha didn't ask the, for the double portion because he just wanted to be relevant or he just wanted to ask for, for asking sake. He understood that the times that he was living in was very challenging. And if his master of all people was so despondent at a point that he had to give him to give in to depression, and talk of suicide, then he, the mentee, needed a double portion of his mentor's power to be able to, un to withstand the challenges that was being thrown at him by the forces of darkness in, in northern Israel at, at this time. So if we have been told that we are going to enter into challenging times in the year that is ahead of us, then it makes every sense that we begin to seek the double portion of the anointing of God, double portion of the promises of God, double portion of the Holy Spirit, so that we will be strong enough to withstand the forces and the powers of darkness will throw at us. Because he's going to. It is clear about that. The devil is not going to sit down. He doesn't want to see us succeed in 2022. But he's a liar because he's fighting from the point of defeat. We, on the other hand, are fighting from the point of victory. Jesus bore the, the, our sins on the cross and, <coughs> excuse me, he, he defeated the forces and the powers of darkness on the cross. So we can stand in victory and march towards taking hold of of that which is ours because of the anointing of God upon our lives. And so I want you to begin this year focusing on the fact that ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses first in Jerusalem, then in Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. That's dunamos. You shall receive power. Dunamos. Power to be able to withstand anything that the enemy will throw at us in the year 2022. We need to believe God for very hard and difficult things. Because we are going to face hard and challenging situations. Hard and challenging circumstances. But our God is saying he is able to do far more exceedingly and abundantly than we can ever think or imagine through his power that we in us in accordance to Ephesians chapter two verses, uh, uh, chapter three verses 20. So when we understand that, then it makes a whole new difference in our walk and talk with Christ. Because then we now know it's not by our own power, but it's by the power of of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. For we have overcome the world already. We are fighting from the standpoint of victory because of Jesus' finished work on the cross of Calvary for us. So I want you to understand, the couple of days ahead, we're going to look at what does it take to be a candidate for a double portion of the blessings of God in the year 2022. God is going to bless you abundantly, but you need to be able to position yourself in such a way that you can be a candidate for the blessings of the Lord. You can be a candidate for receiving the double portion of God's anointing, the double portion of the Spirit of God to enable you to be able to stand, to withstand the forces and the powers of darkness that may come against you in your faith in this year that we are entering in. It takes one billionth of a second to invite Jesus into your heart and he will come with the Holy Spirit and stay in you and grow in you as you desire more of him, as you desire a double portion of him, you will see yourself growing in substantial power that even before the enemy comes, you can sense him long off and begin 
to take him through the offensive weapons that you have in Ephesians chapter 6 that talks about the weapons of our warfare not being carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. It takes a double portion of the anointing to be able to wield those weapons against the forces and the powers that fight and militate against you. The Holy Spirit comes in and he indwells in you. You get, as you seek a double portion of it, you get the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You get a double portion, an overflowing portion of the Holy Spirit. And that is when you can march through the year in power and confidence that your God is able to keep you and to sustain you from falling. Thank you for taking time to listen to today's devotional podcast. If you therefore understand that you are weak and on your own, you cannot win this battle, you need Jesus to help you, then you can invite him into your life and ask him to take over. Come with the Holy Spirit and anoint you and baptize you to overflow and then you shall experience this double portion of the anointing to be able to march forward. We'll look at the things and the steps that we need to take to be able to receive this double portion as we read uh, uh, from uh, the example of Elijah. Pray with me if you want to invite Jesus into your life. My Lord and Savior Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for your finished work on the cross of Calvary for me. Thank you that through your work, I can fight from the standpoint of victory. I invite you into my life. Cleanse me of all my iniquities. Wash me clean. Though my sins are as scarlet, make them as white as snow. Thank you, Lord. I invite you into my life. Take absolute control and come and reside in me with your Holy Spirit. And give me, grant me a double portion of your Holy Spirit. That will enable me to be able to fight this battle and face these challenges that this brand new year brings. Thank you for giving me a new life. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Beloved, if you have prayed this prayer, you have become born again, you are a child of God, you are heaven bound. So find a Bible-believing, Christ-centered church to attend. Let them know you have just received the Lord and they will come around you and help you grow in the things of God. If you are listening to any of our podcast stations on the 15 podcast stations that we have, I encourage you to put in the comment section and let us know that you have received Christ or you need materials that will help you grow in the things of God. Now, if you live in the Fredericksburg, Pennsylvania area of Virginia, I encourage you to come to, I invite you. Now, if you don't have a home, a church you can call home, I invite you to our church, a spirit-filled, Christ-centered, Bible-centered, and you will never be the same. Thank you for taking time to listen to today's devotional podcast. Now, our services are Sundays held at 9 and 11 a.m. We are on the right-hand side after the Massaponics High School on Route 1 towards Richmond. Come and you will be welcomed in a time. Thank you for taking time to listen to today's devotional podcast. And God bless. Happy New Year. Bye.